Let's get more on this. And joining me now is Grenville Cross, the uh, former director of public prosecutions in Hong Kong. Thanks so much for joining us on TRT World. Now, I want to start by asking you about the video we've seen of um, a build-up of Chinese paramilitary forces assembling 30 kilometers from Hong Kong in the city of uh, Shenzhen. Why is this and how much of a concern is it? Well, so far it's not a concern because the uh, central people's government has made it quite clear that it doesn't want to intervene in Hong Kong unless it becomes absolutely necessary and, and unless the uh, level of violence uh, becomes uh, intolerable. And it's indicated that uh, so far it is confident that the Hong Kong government uh, and the Hong Kong police force uh, can contain the situation. Uh, and uh, hopefully that will remain their view and it won't be necessary for them to intervene. And the Hong Kong police force are actually doing a very good job of upholding law and order in what are very difficult uh, uh, circumstances. And what does the law actually say about Chinese military intervention in Hong Kong? Well, the, the basic law, of course, is the mini constitution of Hong Kong. Uh, and that, was, uh, that came into effect to regulate the one country, two systems uh, paradigm in 1997 when uh, uh, Hong Kong was handed back from Britain uh, to uh, China. Uh, and that indicates that if the uh, point is reached whereby the uh, Hong Kong government can no longer rely on the police to control the situation because of the level of disorder, then it can ask the uh, uh, mainland authorities to provide troops to assist the local police uh, in uh, maintaining law and order. Uh, and in a worst case scenario, uh, the basic law also provides that the central government uh, could uh, declare a state of emergency uh, and extend uh, mainland laws to, uh, to Hong Kong. But hopefully we are far short of that situation. Uh, and as far as I can tell by being here on the ground, the local police force is coping very well with the unprecedented challenges which they are facing. And I just want to ask you about uh, Carrie Lam and, and her remarks. She warned uh, of a path of no return if these protests continue. And one British media report warned of fears of another Tiananmen Square are no longer absurd. What do you make of both these remarks? Well, those remarks are, of course, uh, inflammatory and uh, bear no relation to reality because, as I say, the Hong Kong police force, even though it is facing great challenges, uh, are able to cope with the law and situation uh, so far uh, and are doing so uh, admirably, uh, in my view. Uh, Carrie Lam is obviously very concerned about the situation because we are seeing unprecedented levels of violence uh, and huge damage is being done uh, to uh, Hong Kong's economy uh, and its way of life. I mean, there are certainly people in Hong Kong who want to bring our present way of life to an end and to end the one country, two systems uh, paradigm under which Hong Kong has been ruled since 1997. Uh, and they have their own reasons for doing that. For example, they know that if uh, Hong Kong does well, then this reflects well on China. If Hong Kong fails or does badly, then this reflects badly on China. So China is very much determined to maintain the one country, two systems principle. Uh, and uh, so is the Hong Kong government. So we are all doing our level best here to ensure that uh, law and order is maintained uh, and that the forces of disorder don't get the upper hand. And Mr Cross, what needs to happen for this to stop? Uh, because the protesters, they don't look like they're going to stop anytime soon. And the authorities don't seem like they're listening to the five demands from those protesters. Well, of course, uh, Mrs Lamb's government has already made one very important concession namely to freeze the uh, extradition uh, proposals, which was the original cause of complaint. But having made that concession, it simply emboldened the activists to ask for yet more things. And one of their most ludicrous demands now is for the dropping of all criminal charges uh, against those people who are responsible for riot, for wounding police officers, and for invading our parliament and causing over 40 million uh, Hong Kong dollars worth of criminal damage. So clearly these are intolerable demands which cannot possibly be met. So what we must hope for is that the community as a whole will come together uh, and make it clear that violence is not acceptable. Uh, people, authority figures such as parents, employers, teachers must indicate that violence has uh, no role to play in Hong Kong society. And going, going uh, down the road, Mrs Lam herself must develop her proposals for the future development of Hong Kong, uh, including, for example, its future role uh, as a technology and innovation hub 
uh, its uh, continuing role as a financial centre, and she must also lay out uh, uh, better conditions, uh, uh, livelihood conditions, such as uh, her proposals for more housing uh, and matters of that type. But it's wrong to think there is any uh, instant uh, solution. There's no magic wand which can suddenly be waved to resolve things. Uh, and, uh, as I say, people have to be resolved uh, to, to get this uh, sorted out uh, by the various means which I've described. Mr Grenville Cross, former Director of Public Prosecutions in Hong Kong, thank you very much indeed for your time and comments.